Welcome to the Path to Mindset Mastery. My name is Brad Bizjak. I'm a mindset strategist and coach, inspirational speaker, and creator of Appreciation Academy. And my mission is to help you maximize your life, to truly master your mindset, and develop, elevate all levels of your life to the next level so you can appreciate the journey on your path through personal growth and development towards success. Before we get started today on our topic of slowing down to speed up, which I think is going to be so crucial for all of us achievers, there's a couple little housekeeping items that I want to bring up to you. First is if you find value today, give us a rating and review. Absolutely love to hear your feedback. Second is if there's a topic you would like to hear on the uh, Path to Mindset Mastery podcast, go ahead and shoot that over to us in an email at support at bradbizjack.com. Be happy to cover that for you in a later podcast episode. And like I've been talking about the last couple of weeks, I'm so excited about this. We have our brand new Morning Mindset Mastery video series coming out to you. It's literally daily, totally free daily inspirational two to three minutes super short videos that give you daily empowerment and inspiration so you can start your day and morning on the right foot and transform the entire rest of your day there again they're super short two to three minutes and it gives you an empowering thought to jumpstart your mind for success it's totally free we've linked it up below this and if you're interested in joining that getting a little daily dose of a mindset coaching video in your inbox each weekday, head to bradbizjack.com slash morning mindset mastery, and you'll be able to enroll in that today. So let's dive into this idea of slowing down to speed up. This has been a huge theme in my life lately. I am the person that when I want success or something, I want it to happen now. Like I want to learn. I want to grow. Like when I think of a good idea, let's say I decide I want to buy a Roomba. Hypothetically, I want to buy a Roomba. I'm not the guy to sit and wait and reflect and think about if it's a good purchase. I'm not the guy to look at reviews. I'm the guy that's like, you know what? I want a freaking Roomba, so I want to buy a Roomba right now, right? Like that, That's who I am. And I've been learning in my life that a huge key to success, and this is coming with maturity over the course of time, is actually slowing down. Slowing down and how it will allow me to speed up right? To calculate my moves a little bit better. And really this comes down to presence. I want you to think about anytime you're stressed out in your life, it's because it is based on fear of what's happened in the past or fear of the future. That's it. That's it. It's because you're not being present anytime you're stressed. Think about it. Stress equals fear. Fear means you're worried that something happened or might happen. That's it, right? And does a fearful state cause your life to grow and thrive? Absolutely not. And there might be money challenges. There might be spousal challenges. There might be bank account challenges or business challenges, whatever it is. But regardless of what the challenge is, if you're not present through that challenge, you're letting fear dictate how you handle the challenge. Because what do we do when we have a problem in our life that hits us and it's emotionally challenging? We link up a memory in our mind and these emotions are linked to that memory. But then what we do is we make the mistake of trying to create something new from the mindsets of the past. Does that make sense? All right, we literally live in the past and use it to create the future that will never get us to where we want to go. Anytime, if you think about any time you've been in a flow state where things are just going and rocking and moving and shaking and grooving and you're crushing it, any time you have been in a flow state, you are present. Anytime you are feeling deeply in love, you are present. Anytime you're feeling like you're making the right investment decisions or mastering your money in the right way, you're being present. Anytime you're having a great time with your friends, you're in the moment. But think about any time you're not having a good time in any area of your life. It's because you're not living in the moment. You're absolutely not. And it's such a cliche, live in the moment. What does that mean? It means be present and live in what's happening right now instead of bringing the past to the present and the future. Think about business. In business, if you have a lack of presence in your business because you're worried that your business hasn't grown and might not grow, will you be able to grow your business in the right way? Absolutely not. You're not going to be creative. You're not going to tap into your full potential. You're going to bring the failure of the past, which is a gift, by the way, because failure equals feedback. You're going to bring the failure of the past to what you're working on right now. And will people be able to tell? 
Yes, they'll be able to tell a mile away that you're bringing the failure of the past to it. They, they're not going to define it as that, but they're going to feel like their bullshit meter is so high. They can tell when someone feels off and doesn't feel alive or when they're BSing them. And trust me, I know I used to be one of those people that would try to BS everyone. I would pretend that my life was amazing, but secretly I was living in fear that I wouldn't be able to be successful, right? So if you live that way with your business, you're not going to create the results that you want. When you don't create the results that you want, you feel like you're not living up to your potential. But then you bring that stress out of your office to your wife and kids or your husband and kids. And now you're not present with them. And you think about, think about what happens with that. A lot of people say, my spouse doesn't support me in my business. No, you're just bringing fears of the past or the future to your spouse when it comes to your business. Spousal support is caused by us. We, we create that. Because think about it, from your spouse's perspective, if you're not present, if you're trying to go, 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 and you're trying to solve these problems with the, with the feelings of the past, what happens? You're addicted to your phone. You're on your phone seven hours a day, you know, on social media, scrolling, do, do, do. And if you're my spouse and I'm like this, fuck, I gotta answer this message, right? And you're just scrolling. And if you're listening to this podcast, I'm looking at my phone right now. Right? And if you're not watching, I'm, look, I'm looking at my phone right now and I'm totally disengaged. I'm scrolling my phone, I'm posting on social media, I'm answering on Messenger, right? And I'm disengaged from my family. And then I'm not having the business success I want because I'm not present in my business. So now my spouse sees that I am not winning in the business that I wanted to be winning in. And it's taking more time away from them. And what am I likely doing? I'm likely complaining about the fact that it's not working. So from their perspective, what do they see? It's causing you pain. So they're going to be like, why are you doing this? So we say they don't support us, but really they're trying to protect us. They're trying to gain you back. So that's what happens when we're not present with our spouse. So now we have our spouse that isn't supportive of what we're doing. Our business isn't going anywhere. And then what happens when you bring that to your kids or the office the next day? You bring that stress in your marriage or your business to the office the next day and you're stressed about what's going on at home. You're stressed about your business, how you got, got to have the energy to get home and build it. But then you get to work and you can't concentrate. And what happens? Your boss gets on you. Maybe gives you a bad performance review and all that stress leads to you coming home. And when you get home, you slam the door. Maybe you put your keys down. You're in a pissy mood. You grab a beer. You put your hands down in your pants, slouch on the couch, and you watch some TV show to unplug, right? And what do your kids do? Daddy, 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 mommy, mommy, mommy. Will you pay attention to me? Will you play with me? And you're like, not right now. So what does it do to your kids? They crave your love and you're not giving it to them. So how do they grow up? Craving your love and feeling like you've, they need to do something to get you to approve of them. And this is obviously an extreme example and it's compil compiling on each other over and over and over again, but you can probably relate to some of this in some way, shape or form when you're not present. All of this is because we're living in the past or the future. And it's okay to reflect. We're gonna talk about that a little bit. There's time, scheduled time for reflection that we want to do and don't get me wrong, like I love the future. I love the future. Like I am very futuristic thinking about ideas. What could be one of my favorite words is possibility. I love that word. But if I go to the future from a negative state of what didn't happen in the past, it ruins everything. So, but think about the alternative. If I have total presence in my business where I'm just connected to the mission and the passion I have to serve these people at the highest level and I'm going to pour myself into them and think about what this is going to do for their life. And then from that excitement that comes from it, I come home or I leave the office and I'm fully alive with my wife and I'm present with her and I'm playful with her and I'm joking with her and I'm passionate with her and I give her a big wet kiss and I'm just, I pick my daughter up and I spin her in the air and not hit her head in the ceiling fan and I spin her in the air and I'm, don't worry, that's never happened. And I hug her and I kiss her and I, I set her down and I'm just playful and excited and present. And I talk about the wins I had in my business. What, did they get? what is she going to do? She's going to support me more in my business. That's going to give me more energy to thrive. But then what happens if I were, if I had a corporate job and I went to the office the next day with that energy, I'm going to show up skipping be like, I'm super excited to be here. Life is awesome. And what's my boss going to do? Love your positive energy, Brad. Keep it going. Keep your, your hustle up. Keep this going in, in your day-to-day -day work because it's creating a positive impact in the office. And what's that going to do to my self-esteem? It's going to raise it tenfold. All because... I was not living in fear of the past. I was not bringing past failures to my existing circumstances. And I wasn't living in fear of the future. Presence, slowing down to really live in the moment and think about the importance of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and how it's serving and how it's loving and how it's caring about people will help you speed up. How do you do this? How do you do this? Like being present, it's such a, a cool idea, right? Everyone's like, yeah, be present, right? 
Live in the moment. But what does that mean? It means you're intentionally taking time to slow down. It means you're intentionally doing a couple things. Number one is you're taking care of your own mind, right? Jim Rohn says, stand guard at the gates of your mind or weeds grow automatically. Super important that we do that. We're taking time to turn our brain off. We're meditating. We're going on a walk. We're relaxing. We're slowing down and we're consuming positive material. If we're not consuming positive material that helps us think more optimistically, right? Think about what optimism is. Optimism, it's like, it's like feeling the best, right? If we're not consuming material that makes us feel optimistic about our life, then we're not going to win. Because think about what everything else does. The media or social media or the news, what does it do? It startles you because that's what sells. And if you flood your mind with what could go wrong in an election or what could go wrong in you know, a COVID-19 pandemic or could go wrong in this, this, and that. If you flood your mind with that and you try to serve people from that state, what's going to happen? You're not going to get to where you want to go. No one's going to listen. No one's going to be inspired. What matters is that we're totally present. We're taking care of our own mind. We're clearing it out. We're doing self-care, taking care of ourselves, and we're flooding it with great stuff. And on top of that, you're intentionally unplugging. And to the business owner and to the person that's a high achiever, this is something that is going to, it, in the beginning, might feel very hard to do. You have all these responsibilities, but you need to take time and unplug. You absolutely must do it. I do not work on Saturdays and Sundays, and I try to take time off consistently throughout the week to be with my wife and daughter during the day and in the evening, no matter what, when I'm not doing speaking engagements. And I take time to intentionally unplug and think about nothing to do with business. I'm not unplugging and then scrolling my phone to see what happens. And, and I have done that, right? But I notice that when I do that, it's not as effective. But when I totally unplug, what I notice is it takes me a little bit of time to get out of this hustle, 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 go, go, go state, right? But I need to do it. It's so important because when I do it, I come back refreshed because I have recharged batteries. And when I come back refreshed, I bring that energy to everything that I do. Think about NASCAR. If you have a super fast car and you're going around that track, but you never pull into the pit area to get new tires, new gas, clean the windshield and get a sip of water, what's going to happen? If you never pull in, you won't win because what's going to happen? You'll burn out. Your tires will explode. You'll spin out, crash into the wall, whatever it is. Pit stops are required to win for everyone and you won't see one super successful in all terms of the word you can make a lot of money and not actually be successful because success without fulfillment is total failure but if you're that person that's truly successful where you're wealthy financially and spiritually and emotionally you're taking time for yourself and it's super super important that you do that and one of the ways that i've been applying this to my life and we i talked about earlier like don't live in the past there is one time where living in the past is actually a good thing and that is your intentional time of reflection. Your intentional time of reflection. This has been a, a big part of my life lately. And it's been coming up over and over and over again. And I want to share it with you as I'm learning it. But what I've learned is that taking time to reflect on my day, taking time to reflect on my week, taking time to reflect about how I handled specific situations, it's been huge in my life. It's been astronomical in terms of what I'm able to achieve now compared to before. What I used to do, if you think about like any success journal that's written, right? What do they have? They have the morning prompts. And with me, what I would do is by the, the evening prompts, I would just be like, screw it. I'd watch TV to unplug, have a beer and go to bed, right? But I've been taking time to slow down and do those prompts. And not just fill them out, but actually think about it. Or maybe before bed, I'll sit there and I'll, I'll read a book and I'll reflect on the pages. How can I apply this to my day tomorrow? Or I'll look back on the day and say, okay, what did I do really, really great at and why? And what wasn't I the best at today? What didn't I achieve really highly with today? What didn't, how did I, did I not show up my best? And then how can I improve that to improve that tomorrow? And just taking that time to slow down and reflect on how I've been intentionally in intentional time, not living in the past, taking proactive measures to look at it to gain perspective to live in the present. From doing that, it's been huge. I come up with new ideas that I never even thought possible before, all because of slowing down to speed up. So I hope you choose to apply this today. When you do, you'll feel alive, you'll feel fulfilled, you'll feel like you're totally present. It will be so much easier to go through your day and take care of these big goals that you really want to hit. So if you found value today, please give us a rating and review on iTunes. Would love your written word and, and the star rating, whatever's good for you. Would love to hear how this is serving you in some way, shape or form. If there's a topic you'd like to learn, shoot us over an email. 
happy to cover that topic in a future podcast. And of course, like I mentioned, the brand new Morning Mindset Mastery videos are out now. This again are super short two to three minute mindset coaching videos every weekday delivered right to your inbox so you can start your day in daily empowerment and inspiration so you can start the morning on the right foot and transform your entire day. Again, the videos are super short, two to three minutes to give you an empowering thought to jumpstart your mind for success every single day. How you start your day is super, super important. I hope you choose to let that be part of your morning routine. So we've linked it up below. If you want to go there right now, head to bradbizjack.com slash morning mindset mastery. Again, my name is Brad Bizjack. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for being here. Hope you got so much out of this and go out there today and every day and live your life with a genuine smile on your face. I'll see you next week.